Okay, let's make this the last one in the cognitive uh, biases and, and uh, distortions uh, playlist. This is number 18. This is the curse of knowledge, or I've heard it referred to um, as cognitive conservatism. This is the idea that once you learn something, you um, mistakenly presume that to be obvious to others. Uh, this, uh, this one's a big problem um, for me. Uh, personally, because of uh, the Asperger's, and uh, I read a lot, and I, when I talk to people, I've read a book, and it's it's kind of in my memory, and it pops up quick because of av uh, the availability um, bias or, or whatever. Uh, I make the mistake of assuming I talk to people or have, try to have a conversation assuming that they uh, also know uh, what's going on uh, in my head because they've read that book. Uh, and at the same time, I'm super frustrated when somebody says something to me, um, like, for instance, a, a, a car mechanic. You know, you'll go somewhere to have your car fixed, and they'll come out and say, well, you know, you need to, you got your zip zorps are, are blown, you got to replace your rotor cuff on this bushing, and this, and they, they talk to you as if you work on cars all day long, and your entire world is uh, mechanics and um, mechanistic parts. And um, that makes people, and of course people like, well, they don't want to admit when they don't know things um, for some reason. That's uh, one of the other cognitive distortions we talked about here. But then they'll tend to feel um, stupid about that or not say, hey, you know what? This is the cognitive conservatism. You know a lot about that and you're assuming that I do, but I don't. So maybe you could um, work that into layperson terms. You get this a lot uh, with um, physicians. They use a lot of medical term, a lot of jargon, uh, any profession really, a lot of jargon. Uh, sometimes that's done to take advantage of you, uh, like forcing a frame uh, or making you feel like you um, don't know enough to anchor you into a position of ignorance. They take advantage of you in that, that, in that case. Usually anybody's trying to sell you something. But uh, the curse of knowledge is remembering your confusion about a subject before you understood it. So when you're talking to somebody about something, it's always try to put yourself in in that frame of mind before you understood uh, the topic. So um, I teach at the university. I'm the, the human anatomist, or a human anatomist there, not the. And uh, I teach uh, anatomy to patients and students, uh, and really anybody that'll listen to me talk about it, because that's uh, what I enjoy. Um, you should check out our anatomy playlist uh, on the Uncivilized channel. But it, sometimes it's hard to remember when you're rattling through the names of uh, bones and muscles and nerves and arteries and their placement and using all those terms. It, uh, if you get carried away, you forget that uh, they're, they're just sitting down to learn these terms. So you have to kind of pace yourself and beware of the um, cognitive conservatism or the curse of knowledge uh, bias that you have. In martial arts, we talk about putting yourself in the white belt frame of mind. A lot of times, um, you know, if you're a, a higher ranking, uh, like say a black belt, and you've been there doing this martial art for years, you're really good at it. You forget what it was like when you weren't good at it. Um, you know, you might fall prey to the, um, the bias that we talked about a little earlier where you think, well, I'm really good at it because, uh, you know, I did all the hard work and everything else. And you forget all the the higher ranks and the other people that took hours and hours to mentor you and to, to, to help you learn it and to practice with you. And you, um, you know, you get into that distortion and you, you kind of judge uh, the, the people that are still learning like, oh, why can't they get it? Mm, this is a tough one. You got to stop and think, okay, well, when I was a white belt, I also had a lot of trouble remembering the terms uh, and the, the actions and the movements and the strategies and the physical fitness. So cut them a break. Try to put yourself in that beginner's mindset or at least remember, be mindful of what it was like before you acquired the knowledge. Um, and then when you're talking to others, you know, maybe get a feel for where they're at on the... the information or the knowledge of that topic matter so you guys can uh, converse. A good rule of thumb for something is what Socrates said is first define the terms. So always agree on um, what you're talking about, maybe the level uh, you're gonna, uh, of, of, of terminology you're going to use to talk about it. Like I can discuss um, <clears throat> some anatomic uh, uh, anomalies or 
uh, conditions or uh, pathologies with another physician or a pathologist using terms I wouldn't use with my uh, patients because <clears throat> if I say, uh, you know, you've got a bad case of onychocryptosis and we're going to have to do uh, minor surgery to take care of that. Um, I forget, well, I don't forget, but in this example, that would be me forgetting that the patient might have never had a medical terminology course or understand Latin and uh, Greek uh, root words. And all they hear is a big, scary sounding word and surgery. Uh, when Really what I was saying is you've got on a crypto, you have an ingrown toenail and we're going to do a minor surgery and cut that out. So uh, first we would kind of define like a lay person terms um, of the subject we're talking about. So I can remember to avoid this bias and not just start talking about a subject as if the people I'm interacting with know everything that I know about that subject and can talk about it. And uh, the other way this comes in handy is when someone's saying something to you and you're feeling a little lost, be upfront about it. Stop and say, hey, you know, I think right now uh, you're assuming I know more than I do about this subject. So why don't you um, try to explain it to me in a way that my very limited knowledge, I can understand it. And then I'll know more about it. So next time we can talk. Uh, was that that show, The Office, where Michael Scott says, <laughs> says explain it to me like I'm a, a five-year-old when Oscar, um, the accountant, is trying to explain some kind of tax thing to him. Um, That's a good example. So this was the last one. This is probably a, a big one, cognitive conservatism. Be aware that others might not know uh, some of the stuff that you know uh, when you're talking to them. Uh, it's not that you're uh, smarter. Uh, you just have more information on that and it, you're going to communicate on purpose, it uh, is very helpful to be on the same page, right? Define your terms, define your parameters, uh, define the levels you're going to discuss this at, and then you'll be able to communicate uh, more effectively. Right? Communicating on purpose involves an awareness of all of these cognitive biases and distortions, uh, and especially uh, this one. So those are a dozen and a half, uh, doesn't have 18, very common cognitive distortions, real quick um, discussions of each one. I don't know if this is going to be put into one big video or broken into a bunch of little videos, but um, go back and check them all out, any order, and then link back to the first one we talk about um, uh, how, to, uh, how to make yourself a more mature, rational person, kind of improve your thinking and your communication skills by tackling these uh, distortions and fallacies and understanding them. So hope you liked that. Uh, if you did, leave a uh, leave some comments, leave some questions uh, under all the um, the videos in the playlist. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, uh, and, and then give us a like. Thanks.